Good evening, this is Brass Tax. I'm Zakhar Jacob. The National Investigation Agency has arrested the two main suspects in the Rameshwaram Cafe blast that happened in Bengaluru. The arrest happened in Digha in Bengal, which is about three hours away from Kolkata. The two accused are Abdul Mateen Taha, who is said to be the mastermind, and Musavir Hussain Shahzeb, who is the alleged bomber, the man who placed the bomb in the Rameshwaram Cafe in East Bangalore. But the fact that these terrorists were arrested after a 40-day chase, which led all the way from Karnataka through Telangana, and then finally they were picked up in Bengal, that has led to all-out politics between the BJP and the Trinamool Congress. The BJP has accused Mamta Banerjee's government of being soft on terror, that this is evidence that Bengal is becoming a safe haven for terrorists. The TMC, on the other hand, has hit back saying, that the Bengal police were also involved in this operation, that it was a joint operation with the NIA and the Bengal police, and that the BJP should stop politicizing things like national security. But first, let's bring you the story of how a 42-day-long chase by the NIA eventually landed them the big fish, the alleged mastermind of the blast and the alleged bomber himself. ड्यूटी और मारता इधर है, ना वो संपूर्ण वादन तक जवाबदारी कोटी देवे, यार उत्तपिस इधर है अपने इच्छित तकन बदले। सवाल तो ये उत्पन्न होता है कि पश्चिम बंगाल हर प्रकार के आतंकी और जिहादी और इस प्रकार के उग्रवादी मानसिकता रखने वाले व्यक्तियों के लिए एक सेफ हेवन एक अड्डा क्यों बन चुका है? Within two hours, two घंटे में ही information मिलने का दो घंटे में हम लोग पूरा overcrowd करके जो रामेश्वरम blast है उनके दो जो suspect थे उनको हम detain कर पाए। दो घंटे बंगला लुकी चिलो, दो घंटे और मुझे हमने धोरे दिए थी। आम आदमी पुलिस आज शेखाने पर जब बंगला सेप ना है तो दिल्ली से All right, let me now open this up to our guests who's playing politics over something like terrorists and the fact that terrorists uh, were picked up by the NIA in Bengal. Let me now go across to our guests who are joining us. Sanju Verma is national spokesperson of the BJP. Uh, L. Hanumantaya is former Rajya Sabha member of parliament of the Congress. Riju Dutta is spokesperson of the TMC. Yashwardhan Azad is former IPS officer and special director with the Intelligence Bureau. Uh, Sanju Verma, let me start with you. Uh, yes. These two men had to be picked up and they were picked up by the NIA, so kudos to the agency. Uh, the Bengal government is saying that the Bengal police were also involved. This was a joint operation and within two hours, the moment they got information, they helped in this joint operation and helped pick up these two, uh, the mastermind and the bomber. Why is the BJP politicizing and saying that uh, Bengal is becoming a safe haven for terrorists? You know, Zaka, uh, at the very outset, let me tell you that if the West Bengal police has cooperated with the uh, National Investigation Agency, the NIA, uh, then, uh, you know, uh, kudos to both the West Bengal State Police and, of course, the NIA, which has spearheaded the entire operation. I will never sit and undermine the credibility of any investigation agency, unlike the opposition, uh, which has made it a habit to malign the enforcement detected, the CBI, the CIB, the NIA, what have you. Point number one. Point number two, for all those who keep asking, what is the success rate of ED? What is the success rate of NIA? Please note that the success rate of the NIA is more than 96.7%, which means that they've been doing an excellent job in the last couple of years. Point number three, the reason why the BJP has accused the Trinamul Congress and especially the Mamta Banerjee-led regime uh, for making West Bengal a safe haven for terrorists is simply this. You look at Howrah, Hooghly, Murshidabad, Uttar Dinajpur, uh, North 24 Parganas, uh, especially North 24 Parganas, uh, which is where Shah Jahan Sheikh was hiding for 58 long days before finally he had to surrender after there was a court judgment saying that this man should surrender, 
or he should be pulled up from wherever he was hiding it is not the bjp it is not sanju varma the kolkata high court and in fact the supreme court has castigated mamta banerji who is not only the chief minister but also the de facto home minister of west bengal not once during the shah jahan sheikh uh, slash sandesh khali case but even otherwise if you recall last april okay. uh, we had the ram navmi and uh, you know uh, we had so much of violence and mamta banerji said kuch hua hi nahi panchayat ko violence in june 2023 when the supreme court told mamta banerji the license to hold elections does not mean a license to violence mamta banerji said kuch hua hi nahi hansa khali gang rape mamta banerji said kuch hua hi nahi do tmc councilor son was responsible okay. with whom 12 people were charged to death and mamta banerji says kuch hua hi nahi so it is this attitude of rationalizing violence rationalizing terror making murshidabad a cottage industry of crude bombs you know this is what the bjp is up so, against so let uh, uh, riju datta respond to that the fact that after a 40 day chase these two men were picked up in digha 3 hours away from kolkata the bjp is saying that's evidence enough that the mamta banerji government is being soft on terror that bengal is becoming a haven for terror and the point that sanju varma made whether it is murshidabad and a cottage industry for crude bombs and whether it is places like malda where always we have seen violence even in this election cycle we are seeing violence in places like kuch bihar bengal has become a haven for violence and violent activities and those who indulge in violence riju look uh, look zakha when the country is going through the highest unemployment and price rise and the prime minister chooses to talk about veg and non veg their spokespersons will talk like this on national tv is quite understandable if the prime minister uh, indulges in such into such frivolous arguments now coming to the most important part if pmc is going to nab terrorists if pmc is going to stop cow smuggling across the border order between india and bangladesh if tmc is going to be responsible for controlling illegal immigration from uh, bangladesh to india then has the prime minister narendra modi resigned or has amit shah resigned because of the sheer incompetence i don't understand this this is the job of the union government i either they resign or they put their hand up and say that we are incompetent we cannot do anything point number 1 point number 2 it is the duty of the bengal police the state government and the ruling party to aid the union government and the central agencies in matter of national security we have always done that we will always do that we don't want it we never wanted any politics over it it is these uh, some 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 absolute jobless of the bjp that have to put out some tweets to bring politics into it my question is this when you have brought politics into this my question is this Who is the who was the Ram Thapi that these two terrorists are nabbed from? Shishi Rodhikari. Who is Shishi Rodhikari? The father of Shubendu Rodhikari, the leader of opposition of West Bengal. Who is Shubendu Rodhikari, the leader of opposition of West Bengal? ED CBI chat sheet mentioned in Charada Narada case resides in East Midnapur. Who is the MP candidate from BJP from East Midnapur that these terrorists are nabbed? Shubendu Rodhikari is owned by Shubendu Rodhikari. No, no. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say, Riju? Are you trying to say that to say, these guys were parachuted from Bengaluru to East Midnapur? Can I finish? Yeah, I'm asking. I'm asking. Non-BJP non state, Calcutta, West Bengal is a non-BJP state. If they are going into all this, what about we are about all this rubbish? Then I can also say that it is the Odhikari family and Shubendu Odhikari who is proving, who is providing safe haven and shelter to uh, terrorists who are against the uh, this in the union government uh, in their own backyard. Let them fight. Let Amit Shah and Narendra Modi ask their leader of opposition. What I tell you is that. Okay. No, no. I, I, I'm still not understanding the point you're making. But anyway, let me go to the other two guests also. I've got uh, Mr. Hanuman Tayya and uh, uh, Yasho Azad also joining us. Uh, Mr. Hanuman Tayya, the point again is this: that yes. when the when the uh, blast happened, your deputy chief minister initially came out and said. that you know we are looking into it uh, this doesn't seem like the handiwork of terrorists so on and so forth uh, and then of course the nia took over the case and when it was evident that ieds were uh, involved and that this is the act of terrorist that's when even the state government there started taking this seriously and now the fact that it took 40 days and these people were traversing through multiple places hideouts we have the entire trail uh, how after the blast both the accused they stayed in guest houses or lodge uh, lodges the nia tracked the purchase of the cap to a store in chennai 
uh, then they were staying in lodges uh, as well as guest houses in places like Telangana uh, as well as Odisha and finally they were nabbed in Bengal, uh, eventually in a town called Diga. The point that uh, the BJP is making and supporters of the BJP are making is that you know, opposition is being soft on terror right from where this incident happened to where these people were finally picked up all happen to be opposition rule states because there's a culture of being soft on terror and appeasement towards one community that you and your government are alleged to be indulging. No, your question is, they were nabbed after 58 days. In a country like this, where 140 crore people are there, the vast uh, geographical uh, area, anybody who commits these kind of mistakes can escape and hide for some days and uh, thanks to NIA that they have done a good job, they have nabbed them. That is point number one. And who has, where he has hided, that is not the question at all. Because whether it is West Bengal or in Karnataka itself or neighboring Kerala or wherever, that question doesn't arise here because even the community which uh, he belongs to or somebody else, the question is, who is a terrorist? He is a terrorist. He has no caste, he has no creed, he has no religion. That is the stand that India has taken from so many years and today also. We are punishing anybody who has been nabbed now. So that should be the question. We should not ask that it has been uh, uh, taken over in West Bengal. So West Bengal government is responsible for keeping them. That is not the correct answer. You should not think on those lines. No, no, that but is, Mr. Mr. Uh, Hanumandaya, uh, this is this is precisely uh, the problem, sir, right? That that you are you are refusing to call this Islamist terror. That is what it is. Okay. These guys are part <coughs> yeah. of the ISIS Shiva Moga module. They are killing not for economic reasons or caste reasons. Yeah. They are killing in the name of religion. Why are you you know shy yeah. of calling it what it is? No, no. See, in India, terrorist can be anybody and any religion. We should treat them as terrorist only and not by their religion. It can be any religion. That should not be the criteria of us while nabbing them and punishing them. We should treat them as terrorists, trial them and punish them. That is what we have to do. Just because he belongs to one community or one religion, Nobody that is reason. accusing the community. Accuse no, no, one second. Let's be very clear about it. Nobody is accusing the community. The issue is, yeah. is there an atmosphere of appeasement yeah. or atmosphere where uh, one particular community is appeased yeah. to? Come therefore, on. Come on. elements like this prop no, no. up. And like, and, and like I said, I mean, even me, even now, me. Mr. Anwandaya, the, the way BJP. the way you are, you know, almost being BJP. equanimous about it. Suggest that, why, why are you not willing to call a spade a spade? This is Islamist terrorism. No, no, I will, I will, I will answer your question. I will answer your question, my friend. See, because he is, uh, belongs to some religion, you cannot accuse a political party which has ruled this country for a long time and punished lot of terrorists, nabbed them and controlled this uh, country so well you cannot accuse them, they are doing some appeasement. See, if the appeasement is your accusation okay. by any political party, it is not correct, it is not justified. According to me, whether it is Congress or it is BJP or it is the coalition government of secular <coughs> parties, nobody is appeasing any political party on the basis of terrorist activities. Okay, we let me ask Yashwardhan Azad. The country second, has never second. compromised. Yashwardhan, Yashwardhan Azad, you know, uh, again, I, I, am, I am, you know, willing to meet uh, Mr. Hanumantaya's argument halfway. Yes, we should not give it a religious color. Uh, yes, we should not politicize it uh, just because there are a few bad apples and there are bad apples in every community, no doubt about it. Uh, therefore, you can't paint everyone with a broad brush. I'm willing to buy that argument, uh, you know, at least meet him halfway in that argument. The problem is that ISIS is not killing because there's an economic disparity in this country or ISIS's philosophy is not because, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some people belong to a certain caste and other people belong to a different caste. ISIS has a very, very specific ideology 
they are killing in the name of religion and by refusing to call that out by refusing to say it as it is we are you know dilly dallying around the problem well, uh, let me uh, start at the very outset, uh, say that it's an act of pure Islamist terror. Now, the problem with the politician statesmen says that they are totally colored by their own party vision. In fact, we had a discussion immediately after the blast, you remember, Zaka, where you had asked me. And I said that the timing of the blast, the mechanics of uh, the way the whole operation has gone, clearly leaves the stamp of a professional hand and maybe it could be the PFI, maybe it could be the IS. Now it is revealed that obviously even the financing could have been through cryptocurrency and you realize that through the navigating through the states, there was such a huge conspiracy because from cells in cells to the facilitation was provided by a particular group. So once this is established that it has the stamp, it has a terrorist hand, I think politics should, should shun away from these things. The other problem is, it's very, very unfortunate to say that because a terrorist has been, you know, caught from a particular place, to call it the haven of terrorists is absolutely wrong, because where you have the sleeper cells today, Zaka, you will know tomorrow where they emerge, and it could they could be emerging from uh, various states uh, uh, itself. Okay. Third thing, which is very, very important, Zaka, we must realize, that this is an act not by NIA alone. NIA has done a brilliant job, there is no doubt. Let me also say, NIA was helmed by a brilliant officer earlier, Dinkar Gupta, who's handed over to an equally brilliant man, Sadanand Date, who's come from uh, Maharashtra. In this particular case, look at the hand of the various state governments. You said that they went through various lodges and state yeah. guest houses. This was the backup given by the various state governments and ultimately it was the West Bengal government which gave, which gave the cooperation. And mind you, in non-political matters, even today, the cooperation between the state police and the center police is excellent. It only happens in cases where you have a political element involved when you get into these problems. So the first thing, even that day I had said, Zaka, if you remember, that no politician should give an incident after a terrorist blast because this is purely the job of the professionals. Yeah. And that should always be kept in mind. So, so again, I come back to that point, Sanju Varma, for two reasons. One, just because they were picked up in Bengal doesn't mean that the state has become a safe haven. It's like saying if they were picked up in Madhya Pradesh, then can you uh, extend that uh, argument and say that Madhya Pradesh has become a safe haven? That's number one. And number two, the point that uh, Yashua Azad made, I think it's a classic uh, study in contrast. Just two or three days ago, we had that incident where the ED team was attacked. Yashua Azad's point is that's a political case and that's why you're seeing friction between center and state. Today, what we saw is a classic example of cooperation between center and state and various agencies, one the uh, central agency, the other the state agency, because it's a non-political one, it's an apolitical issue, it's an issue of national security. Please answer both of those points. Zaka, first and foremost, I want to thank you for calling out the bluff of radical Islamist terror. And I also want to thank Mr. Razad, because he also spoke about uh, radical Islamist uh, threat. Because, you know, I think for some strange reason, uh, we have as a, a civic community, and this is uh, for a, a moment keeping my political ideology aside, you know, I don't understand this business of molly coddling uh, radicals and why are we so scared to name and shame radical Islamists, uh, which is one of the biggest threats. I mean, be it the Coimbatore, uh, you know, cylinder blast in October 2022, uh, be it the uh, Cooker blast in November 2022, be it the uh, Kannur Express, uh, you know, blast in April 2023. There was one thing common in all these incidents, including the very recent Rameshwaram Cafe blast. All these terror incidents were the handiwork of the ISIS. In fact, in the case of uh, the Coimbatore blast, which happened in October 2022, uh, the man uh, killed himself. He was a suicide bomber, Jamesha Mubin. And, you know, I remember Congress leaders saying, Are kuch hua hi nahi. Dinesh Gundurao said, you know, why are we blaming uh, ISIS or any uh, radical outfit, you know, when there is no proof. And when it was found out that Jamesha Mubin's residence was full of ISIS graffiti, 
where he clearly admitted that he is a radical, then the Congress zipped it. I also remember very recently, you know, when uh, Nasir Hussain was elected as a member of Rajya Sabha uh, from Karnataka, there were chants of Pakistan Zindabad, Pakistan Zindabad. And when the BJP brought this to the attention of the general public, the BJP was trolled saying, oh, you know, you people have a myopic vision. You are trying to, uh, you know, colorize uh, this entire uh, thing. Later, forensic evidence revealed that indeed, Pakistan Zindabad slogans were raised on the floor of the Karnataka Assembly. What can be more shameful? This is a classic example of normalizing terror. But I have one very important point to make. Forget about what Sanju Verma is saying or Zaka Jacob is saying or Mr. Yashovardhan Azad is saying. What does the United Nations report of 22-23 say? It says that 9 out of 10 terror outfits in the world have a radical Islamist DNA. That is the phrase used by the United Nations. And they say right from lashkar e taiba to Boko Haram to jamaat ud dawa to ISIS to jaish e uh, you know, to the Hezbollah. They all have a radical Islamist DNA, which the Congress and the Trinamul Congress fail to recognize. Do you forget, Zaka, who's the candidate from Bashirat for the Trinamul Congress? Could they find no one better? It is a man called Haji Nurul Islam who was involved in the 2010 Deganga riots in West Bengal. He took a 45,000 strong crowd and attacked the police station in Deganga. Okay. And we have a Rekha Patra, a woman who was the victim of Sandesh Khali riots. There you have a classic contrast of how Mamta Banerjee, by nominating a Haji Nurul Islam, showcases that she sympathizes with radicals. R She's Riju, given a free run Riju, to Rohingya. you respond to that point about, about your, candidate, your candidate from Bashir Hart? But, but more than that, the larger point also. You, you brought in and said, you know, uh, if, if uh, the central government has failed in curbing terror, then, you know, the home minister should resign, so on and so forth. Let's do a straight up comparison. The record of 10 years of UPA when it comes to terror and the record of 10 years of NDA when it comes to terror. In fact, one of the things that the NDA has managed to achieve, to give it credit, is reduce the number of terror incidents. You remember when UPA was in power, the Indian Mujahideen, virtually every week there was a blast from Delhi to Jaipur to Mumbai. Uh, we don't see that. That's not the case anymore Zaka, in the last 10 years. Zaka, Zaka, you are a very senior journalist and I'm sorry to have to give you these uh, incidents just to jog your memory and the memory of your viewers. Kandar hijack, BJP government. Akshar Bhatt, BJP government. Raghunath Temple attack. Kargil, parliament attack, number one. Parliament attack, number two. Amarnath attack, Godra Rai, Pathan Kut attack. Talk about Sandesh Khali. Attack, Kulbama attack. All during Talk BJP about Sandesh Khali, Riju Dutta. All Why BJP Mantha government. Why Mantha Banerjee, Molly Pragling, Sandesh Khali. Lie. Narendra Modi and Amit Shah, the two most incompetent people this country Your has ever seen. Is the two most incompetent people. Okay, can I speak to Dr. One, 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 one second, one second, please, one second, one at a time, please. Sanju, Sanju ji, Sanju ji, please. Let, let, let him, let him, let him make his point, please. One at a time, one at a time, yeah. Can you show some sympathy for Mr. Mr. Riju Datta, Riju Datta to continue, please. Riju Datta to continue, yeah. Thank you. I have listed out on your show all the terrorist happen, attacks that have happened in the country when BJP government was in power. And nobody can, you know, rebut that. Point number one. Point number two. Nobody, see, the problem is a terrorist is a terrorist. He belongs from Lashkar e Taiba, Mujahideen, or whoever. They should be, you know, I don't know what to do. Shoot them, kill them, put them behind bars and throw away the key. My problem here is this. When BJP uses a terrorist attack for political dividends, the NIA nabbed them. Fantastic, I applaud them. The Bengal police, after they have got information from NIA, assisted the NIA in a joint operation and nabbed these two people in two hours. And the first thing BJP does is, BJP does politics over it. And BJP tries to do this Hindu Muslim thing over a terrorist attack. A terrorist is a terrorist attack. If the terrorist attack has taken in Karnataka, if you are bringing the Karnataka government to box, then it is the Amit Shah who has failed to keep the okay. people of Karnataka safe. Talking about Amit Shah. But Shah. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll give you a chance to respond. But what about what about the question? What about the question on Haji Nurul Islam? Haji, see, if Haji, if Haji Nurul Islam is not a communal person. Whatever BJP has said, why doesn't BJP go to court against Haji Nurul Islam? And it is rich coming from BJP when they have a terrorist called Sadhya Thakur who's accused is a Malaga of blast sitting in the parliament on their 
Okay. Okay. You can you can give ticket to Sadhvi Pragya Thakur. Why can't BJ uh, TMC give to Haji Nurul Islam? Uh, yeah, Sanjeev Verma. You know, Zaka. What I find absolutely hilarious is when now let me come in. You had your say, Riju. Zaka, I find it absolutely hilarious that you know an incompetent Mamta Banerjee. When her spokespeople come on national TV and give lectures on morality, integrity, and ethics to BJP, let me remind the uh, viewers of uh, your show, Zaka, because I think they are the most important stakeholders in this debate. 2016 Malda riots under incompetent Mamta Banerjee. 2017 Bhaduria riots under incompetent Mamta Banerjee. 2018 Asansol riots under incompetent Mamta Banerjee. 2019 Jadavpur riots. Under incompetent Mamta Banerjee, 2021 Sita Kunchi riots. Under incompetent Mamta Banerjee, 2023 Panchayat Court violence. Under incompetent Mamta Banerjee, 2022 who can forget the Birbhum violence? Under incompetent Mamta Banerjee. So Mamta Banerjee and her acolytes have not covered themselves in glory when the BJP decided that the BSFs. Jurisdiction should be expanded to the bordering areas of West Bengal to curb infiltration. Mamta Banerjee was rattled. Why? Because she does not Why want that the illegal Rohingyas who who are being given a free run is by her, they job? should be nabbed. Why does Mamta Banerjee give a free run to Why illegal migrants, to illegal Rohingyas? Okay. And okay. Then I I I want to I want to get the Shah. get to the concluding part. I want to get to the concluding part. Hanumantaya and then Yashu Azad to close out. Uh, Hanumantaya. Now these people have got three-day transit remand. They will be brought back to Bengaluru. Uh, they will be put on trial. But the point is again, the BJP is saying whether it is in Karnataka or in Bengal, opposition rule states are giving an atmosphere where terrorism, if not thriving, is certainly. Uh, uh, it is being condoned. It is being looked the other way. No, it is absolutely wrong. Whether it is Karnataka or it is West Bengal or it is Delhi or it is Bombay, it doesn't matter. How we trial them and what are the evidence that we are going to them and how to punish them is the question. And the same judges and the NIA will be the national body which is under the control of the government of India. How can they doubt the raise these kind of questions that in Karnataka or in West Bengal it will going to be uh, supported to those kind of things and it is absolutely wrong. I don't agree with it. Okay, uh, Yashwar Nazar to close out. The concern is, and and I think Sanju Varma sort of alluded to this. If this is not an incident in isolation. It's not like the Ramishwaram Cafe blast happened just suddenly in isolation. You had. Uh, the Coimbatore cylinder blast. You had the Mangalore pressure cooker blast, and now this. Now, admittedly, it seems like all of these guys were operating from one module. This is what we know of one module. We don't know how many other modules are out there. Isn't that a concern? Absolutely right, Zaka, and I'm glad you you said it. There are two points I want to make while closing out. The first is that uh, this is an excellent investigation. And from this investigation, as you said, they are being uh, uh, brought on remand. We'll get to know a lot of things. How these cells are now operating in terms of terror finance, whether cryptocurrency has been used or not. In that, in that respect, it's going to be a very exciting kind of findings by the investigators in India today. Whether cryptocurrency has come of age in terror financing, that is number one. Number two is of all the sleeper cells which are operating across the southern states, and mind you. The coastal region of Karnataka needs a special look. I appeal to the politicians to forget uh, and keep aside the differences, but look at the terrorist modules very closely and allow their intelligence ed- agencies uh, to work. So we will get a complete idea of how the cells are operating in the sense of cooperation. Mind you, it started with the Simi cadres, and when Simi was banned, they went to PFI. Yeah. and when nia took a lot of action against the pfi and pfi was banned then they they moved over to the is so today the second point which i want to make zaka is that now which our concern should be for the future you know on national security issues let the state forces combine and cooperate because we don't know about the let 
uh, uh, LET sleeper cells. We have terror threat which is emerging from the IS angle, you know, the Khorasan province. There are so many things which are happening and that can only happen if the state agencies are allowed to cooperate. We should have a regular meetings and in fact, the politicians, which I mean the executives, the okay. chief minister should encourage this kind of a cooperation. All right, we'll leave it at that. We'll see uh, how this plays out. Like I said, they're in transit remand. They'll be brought to Bengaluru, produced before a magistrate. And that's when we'll get more details of this entire module and how it operated and how the investigating agencies, uh, after this 40 plus day chase, finally tracked these two. One, the alleged mastermind, the other, the alleged bomber at the Rameshwaram Cafe blast. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll stick to the south in our continuing series of election specials. One week to go before Tamar Nadu votes. I was there for a couple of days earlier this week and I caught up with uh, candidates who are fighting from Chennai, from both sides of the aisle. I caught up with uh, Dr. Tamarisai Saundarajan from the BJP, former governor of Telangana. She's the BJP's candidate from South Chennai. And also caught up with Diana Di Maran, former union minister and the DMK's candidate from Central Chennai. Whether or not, and this is the big multi-million dollar question as far as Tamar Nadu is concerned in this 2024 election, will the lotus bloom or will the shining sun, the rising sun of the DMK continue to rise and shine? That's the million dollar question. I put that to both the candidates, Tamar Isai of the BJP and Dayanadi of the DMK. Quick break, those exclusive conversations on the other side. On the Rameshwaram blast case, we are now learning uh, that there's been a major breakthrough after NIA detained the key suspects. There's another update that the main accused has now been arrested from West Bengal. This is the big breaking story that we are bringing to you with regards to the Rameshwaram blast case. Remember, the NIA had identified Musavvir Hussain Shazib as the key accused who had carried out that blast at the cafe. Uh, the Rameshwaram Cafe in Bengaluru on 1st of March. Those are the CCTV images of uh, the main accused. Let's quickly go across to Arunima who is currently live with us. Arunima, uh, share with us uh, details of this arrest that's just been made. How has the NIA finally been able to trace him all the way to Bengal? So what the NIA has said is that they had concrete leads. They were questioning all the ISIS uh, Shimoga module members for some time now. And based on that, they got a, a lead that uh, perhaps there is a hideout or somebody who's harboring the accused in West Bengal, based on which a team landed up at their hideout in West Bengal early this morning. And they found both the main accused, uh, Muzaf, Muz, uh, Musavvir Hussain Shazib, who's accused of placing the IED at the Rameshwaram Cafe Blast. He's the man you see wearing the baseball cap in all the CCTV footage that was captured by NIA. And his harborer, Abdul Mateen Taha, the alleged mastermind, as the NIA is calling him, mm. he allegedly planned this entire conspiracy, put together the explosives for the IED and trained Shazib to carry out this uh, blast. So the, both of them were together uh, and they were found at this hideout in West Bengal early this morning by NIA. They will be taken uh, to the relevant court in Bengaluru. NIA is likely to seek custody from there. Absolutely. That's in fact uh, a huge shot in the arm for the NIA. On that note, let's also go across to Harish who's live with us. Uh, Harish, major victory for the NIA now that they've been able to trace the accused and the co-conspirator. Uh, this would have been a multi-pronged investigation, I believe. Absolutely. NIA pointing out that uh, they have indeed received uh, help from multiple agencies, not mm. just Kanatka police, but police uh, in other states as well. As Arunama pointed out, uh, this has been an investigation that's uh, uh, gone into several states. It was in Tamil Nadu for a brief while in Maharashtra because there was a suspicion that they had gone to Pune. Now they've been picked up uh, from uh, West Bengal. In the meanwhile, there were other states uh, in North India where they had a bit of a suspicion. That too has been looked into. It also gives an indication on how uh, the planning has happened from the uh, end of these conspirators. Uh, they've gone to multiple cities. They've ensured that uh, the police or NIA in the later stage of this investigation do not get any sort of a lead on their whereabouts. And also right now, the other key aspect that uh, we'll have to talk here is how with the arrest of uh, Abdul uh, Tahin Mata, uh, uh, it, it's a, in a way the complete ISIS Shumuga module mm. has been dismantled. Uh, Sharik is arrested, Masmunir is arrested, 
uh, Taha Matin is somebody who is also seen as a handler or a conspirator in the Mangaluru blast case with his arrest. Now, uh, it's it's in a way end of the ISIS Shumuga module, but definitely two things uh, yet to be ascertained whether they were others. And second, there was another person who went by the name of uh, Colonel. What happens to him? Where is he? Is he absconding? Is he in another country? That's something that the NIA will talk about, uh, but a major breakthrough for the NIA as you rightly mentioned. Absolutely. On that note, uh, Arunima, uh, how the NIA planned this out? Because remember, they, were also, they had also declared rewards uh, of uh, cash price worth 10 lakh rupees to get more information. But as Harish is also highlighting the fact that this could perhaps be the end of the ISIS Shivmoka model. Uh, but do shed light on how much information was received. <laughs> So, we are here in Chennai in the heat and dust of the campaign trail. We are following the South Chennai BJP candidate, Dr. Tamarisai Soundarajan, the former governor of Telangana. She's now in the heat and dust of this battle. Thank you very much, ma'am, for speaking with us here on CNN News 18. What is your assessment for the BJP? The big question everybody is asking is, will Lotus bloom this time? Yes, definitely. Multiple Lotus, number of Lotuses will bloom. Mm. South Chennai, definitely Lotus will bloom. What gives you so much confidence? The love and affection shown to us by the people mm. and our horn. The other uh, contestants, they cannot say who is their Prime Ministerial candidate. DMK cannot say their Prime Ministerial candidate. ADMK cannot say either their <laughs> CM candidate or Prime Ministerial candidate. They have neither CM nor PM. We are the only party who have the very strong Prime Ministerial candidate and people are showing their love and affection measurelessly because you would have watched the rally yeah. and uh, people poured from different parts of the Chennai and people were in the, with the josh and because of that only all the other opponents are frightened they are sleepless now so our honorable prime minister visit and our honorable prime minister schemes each and every scheme each and every house is benefited by his scheme whether it is Aishman Bharat whether it's Jan Naushir, whether it is Jal Jeevan, all the schemes, whether a housing scheme, all the people, anyone will be benefited by one of our honorable prime minister's scheme. So only the state government is jittery. So these all will add our strength and definitely Lotus will bloom in Tamil Nadu. Ma'am, the opposition parties including the ruling DMK here are saying uh, the crowds that came for the prime minister's uh, roadshow two days back here in Chennai, uh, the crowd will not convert to vote. What do you have to say about that? What's the pr problem for them? Huh? <laughs> Why they are jittery? Why they are calculating? Let them note. Mm. This will be uh, transformed into vote. Because you would have seen the crowd. The crowd is not like DMK, ADMK crowd. Just they pay some money and they bring the people. It was not like that. They come voluntarily and they greeted our Honorable Prime Minister voluntarily. You could see the visual, visuals. Nowhere people were standing without any noise or josh. So that itself shows it was not the crowd which bought or brought, but it was the crowd by themselves came to see our Honorable Prime Minister and really that added strength to us and that added hope to us that definitely we will win the Chennai seat. Mr. Stalin, the Chief Minister in an interview to News 18 has said that uh, BJP does not have any real issues, that's why they are raising non-issues like Kachetiva. What do you have to say about that? Now, what issues Stalin has? Today, Stalin has asked 23 questions about Jallikattu, about Tamil in the court proceedings and uh, education being in the central subject uh, from the state subject. I am asking from VP Singh to Manmohan Singh. They were in power. For more than two decades, they were in central power. I am asking one question instead of 23 questions. Why didn't you do all these things when you were in power? What did you do when our brothers and sisters were killed in Sri Lanka? Did you go and visit? So, this is, he's jittery, he's sleepless. He's telling, Honorable PM is sleepless. In fact, if we wake up Stalin, he will tell Modi. Then only he will awake. So, he's so, so much distressed. Okay. But, but on the Kachatiwa issue itself, why do you think it's, a, it's an issue that will have resonance today in 2024? This issue was settled in 1974, 50 years ago. Not settled, it was given. Yes. It was donated. Why? Our Tamil land, why donated? DMK was afraid of, of the corruption charges. Then, Honorable PM and Indira Gandhi was frightening them. So, because of that, they, now let Stalin, whatever may be his allegation, 
let him answer why did they give kachetivu on what compulsion they give the land of tamil nadu to sri lanka let them tell the answer without that why you want to tell in the during the election period at least now we are very particular they were in power for more than two decades why didn't they think of getting back the kachetivu all the problems the fishermen are facing and even the celebrations in the church and people are unable to go and attend it properly even tamil uh, people are unable to go and uh, our honorable uh, vajbai ji mentioned it as bali thiv bali is a character from ramayana and uh, our honorable jana krishna murthy legally fought for the kachetiv what did they do for everything they are legally fighting what did they do so stalin is just lying and he is for alliance sake for victoria sake he is talking people won't respond and definitely we will win and his color will be exposed okay. ma'am last last uh, question uh, yesterday the pm also raised this in the rally one of the dmk candidates has called your state party president a joker the pm says people of tamil nadu will give a befitting reply to that yeah, what do you have to say for that he is a maker of maker of uh, party and uh, he has uh, toiled hard he has come from the basic level from a village to the so dynasties won't understand that that hard work and uh, he, say almost uh, as a youngster he has risen from an ordinary karyakarta to the state president that could happen only in bjp in dmk can you uh, mention one person like that there should be some uh, some person's daughter or some person's son whether it is who is dayanidhi without uh, knowing that he is uh, murasuli maran's son will dayanidhi will have a very big exposure no who is kanimuli and who is narchane candidate kalanidhi and who is vellur candidate uh, murugan all are uh, sudhir murugan all are dynas and i am uh, telling that they are more afraid of bjp so only they are commenting like that finally out of 39 plus 140 seats in tamil nadu and pondicherry how many for bjp a will good good number of seats that's all i can you are say. not giving a number i i cannot give a number but good number i can say uh, including south chennai definitely south chennai is a definite seat okay thank you very much that was uh, the candidate from south chennai dr uh, tamarisai soundarajan who is fighting on a bjp ticket hoping to unseat the incumbent dmk mp from there and she's of course spoken about a range of issues including the kache tv issue which the bjp believes is an emotionally resonant and potent issue which will connect with the voters of tamil nadu well we'll know the results on the 4th of june with camera person saranan this is zaka jacob for cnn news 18 Joining us now is the Central Chennai candidate and the uh, multi-term winning member of Parliament, Mr. Dayanidhi Maran. Thank you very much for uh, speaking with us. So, Prime Minister has been coming to Tamil Nadu to Chennai road show six or seven times. He says lotus is going to bloom this time in Tamil Nadu. See, uh, the Prime Minister has come to Tamil Nadu close to about eight times now. The questions we are asking is this: Throughout for the last three years, the Tamil Nadu government has been raising issues that. the proper finance release is not been happening to tamil nadu see uh, in earlier now when last december when we had the floods and chennai was most affected because we had but more than 200 cm of rain which is never seen before so we asked for for the assistance from the union government and we decided to give a relief of 6000 per family for each, uh, each family in chennai the prime minister initially said that he'll consider it he'll send someone to come and look at it ये बट नॉट अ सिंगल रुपी एट कम पापा अपने पापा एंड मोर मोर ओवर व्हाट इज हैपेंड नाउ इज दैट तूतुकुडी इज फॉर द लास्ट 200 इयर्स वी नेवर सीन अ काइंड ऑफ अ फ्लडिंग इट इज अ बैरन लैंड इट इज रियली गॉट फ्लडेड सो इवन दैट वी आस्क फर्स्ट एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर एज अ नॉट रिस्पोंडेड यू गो बट एज नॉट रिस्पोंडेड बट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर डिड कम कम टू चेन्नई द लास्ट वन मंथ थ्री और फोर टाइम्स Hmm. he didn't even bother to visit the affected areas the least thing he could have done is okay i can't give you money because i don't have the heart to give you any relief i'll at least come and console you he went to thootukudi to inaugurate the port he could have gone to those people and said okay let me console you you are be affected he didn't fail to do it it is affecting him. prime minister is free to do a road show we are more happy that hmm. but to understand that a road show is not for tamil nadu he knows that that the india alliance is going to form the government he's so worried about the north indian voters especially north india is going to vote differently this road show is to impress the north indian voters that see 
I have supported Tamil Nadu. That means I'm still continuing to have support. It's like the hood being the voters. But but tell me, Mr. Maran, the BJP's claim is that there is a substantial chunk of the electorate here in Tamil Nadu who are sick and tired of this oscillation between DMK, five years of ADMK, and they're looking for a third alternative, and the BJP is the third alternative. See, unfortunate, Saka. The narrative which is sent by the uh, BJP IT is being spearheaded and pushed down the throat to all the national news ch channels, including yours. Every national newspaper are to put the narrative. See, that is not the fact. We have a lot of keyboard warriors here who try to promote. So how can see 2019 we failed miserably. 2021 you failed miserably. 2022 you failed miserably. So 2024 you just become a stronger. Yeah. The, the ground grassroots, we are the grassroots. We know what is happening. They are blowing, boosting themselves up, but that's not the reality. BJP will not even come one win one seat. They will not even come to second place. Probably they'll come a little bit more than no touch. You are saying that they will not win even a single seat and they will be behind ADMK uh, in terms of vote share also. They'll be just little above Nota. Little above Nota. Yeah. But, but Mr. Maran, the, the question also that's being asked is, you know, Prime Minister again has raised this whole issue of Kacheti saying, you know, DMK gave it away, Congress gave it away, Indira Gandhi and Mr. Karnaridhi gave it away. The irony of the whole issue is that this anomaly files for RTI on 5th of March. 12th of March he gets apply. That narrative which is, he wants it. See, we, nobody, for a no, common man, we can't get our narrative so fast. The Prime Minister for India for the last 10 years is Narendra Modi. Why didn't he do anything about this? You never realized that Kachati was given away by Congress or DAP. You gave 36,000 crores as a gift to Colombo when they were struggling financially. You could have taken back Kachati with them. Because of election, you have nothing else. You want to cover up your uh, CAG report of 7.5 lakh crores, which you want to do electoral bonds. You want to change the shift of people. And whereas otherwise, the incursion of China, China's incursion is naming Arunachal Pradesh. You have nothing to say that. So you want to just diverge. This is the narrative of BJP. We we'll just laugh about it. And one final question, since you mentioned Mr. Anamale, and you are in the news now because of this viral clip. Yesterday, Prime Minister also reacted saying that people of Tamil Nadu will uh, reject you and give you a befitting reply. What do you have to say about this whole joker comment? See, I still stand by my comment. One of the biggest jokers we have in Tamil Nadu is Sanavari. He is the heaven for meme creators in uh, Tamil Nadu because he keeps talking, saying something in the morning, shifts to another uh, position in the evening. And we really enjoy his uh, comical uh, work in I think We would like BJP to extend him here, more term here, to make sure he makes Tamil Nadu people uh, laugh. But you don't think he, he's taken seriously as a politician in this state? How can you take a person like Anna Mali seriously? If there's a, there are qualities for a leadership. You should be consistent. You should be dignified. You cannot be, behave like a joker. What he does is he's trying to, he wants to be in the news because there's a space, four column space reserved the newspaper. There's a time give, reserved for him by BJP in the, all the TV channels. So he's forced to talk every day and he's making a fool of himself. All right, Mr. Dhanidhi Maran, thank you very much for speaking with us here on CNN News 18. And we hope to see you thank very you. soon. Sure. Thank sure, you. Sir. Thank you very much. So there, there it was, uh, the Central Chennai candidate, Mr. Dhanidhi Maran. He's uh, sticking to his words uh, that he used to describe the Tamil Nadu state BJP president, Mr. Annamalai, saying that he keeps changing his uh, statements and that no one takes him seriously here uh, in Tamil Nadu. Even going on to say that the only reason that Mr. Annamalai does this is to try and be in the media space. With camera person Saravanan here in Chennai, this is Zakar Jacob for CNN News 18. Vrindavan and Mathura is incomplete without tasting the local delicacies like kachori, tikki, samosa, rabudi and uh, dhokla. So right now I'm at uh, Mukesh Sharma Chaat Lassi Wale, a very famous shop uh, of this bridge ki galiya. And in fact, uh, you can see uh, that it is a morning time and uh, you can see that, you know, the food is being prepared. The kachoris are ready. I can also see the tikki is being uh, ready. 
आई कैन ऑल्सो सी ढोकला देन देर इज पापड़ी चाट अवेलेबल एंड पीपल आर कमिंग हेयर इन लार्ज नंबर देर इज लेस स्पेस फॉर अस ऑल्सो टू स्टैंड एंड रिकॉर्ड दिस सीक्वेंस फॉर अवर व्यूवर्स भाई साहब से पूछते हैं भाई साहब कितने साल पुरानी दुकान है ये दुकान है लगभग चौवालीस साल हो गए चौवालीस साल हो गए क्या क्या मशहूर है हमें बताया गया बड़ी फेमस है आपकी दुकान यहाँ पे क्या क्या यहाँ का फेमस है हमारी दुकान की लगभग सभी चीजें फेमस है लेकिन उसमें से आलू टिक्की और लस्सी हमारा है और पनीर चीला तो ये फेमस है आपके और कितने साल पुरानी दुकान है फोर्टी फोर ईयर्स फोर्टी फोर नाइनटीन एटी से स्टार्ट है सो दे यू सी लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल है क्या माहौल है क्या स्वाद है लस्सी का बहुत बढ़िया है बढ़िया है मजा आ रहा है राधे 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 दर्शन हो गए हो गए दर्शन के बाद सीधा यही है सीधा यही है स्वाद लेने पकवानों का हाँ, क्या क्या खाया है आपने? अभी तो सिर्फ लस्सी है आगे आलू चाट और दही वाला देखे। आलू चाट और दही वाला भी खाएंगे क्या सर आपने खाया कुछ खाऊंगी अभी आलू अभी खाएंगे आप आपके आपके पास मैं चिल्ला देख रहा हूँ कैसा स्वाद है कैसा? बहुत ही बढ़िया बहुत बढ़िया स्वाद है दर्शन हो गए आप क्या खा रहे हैं मैं टिक्की छोले टिक्की छोले खा रहे कैसा रिकमेंड करेंगे दर्शन सो विल ट्राई सम टिक्की uh and they add chola uh, over tikki and it's a uh, it's a special uh, uh, dish that they prepare here in vrindavan we'll try we'll taste it muh mein pani aa raha hai so here my uh, tikki chola is ready as many of the people here devotees have recommended me to have it so i'm going to have it now ब्रज की गलियों की एक और मशहूर दुकान से आपको रूबरू कराते हैं इस दुकान का नाम है गब्बर सिंह कचौड़ी वाले सो वेन एवर यू आर इन ब्रज जस्ट मेक श्योर यू कम टू दिस शॉप टू हैव गुड कचौरी एंड सब्जी इन फैक्ट दिस शॉप इज प्रिटी ओल्ड दिस इज वॉट वी बीन चोल्ड एंड दिस इज क्वाइट फेमस यू कैन सी द पीपल आर स्टैंडिंग आउटसाइड इन क्यू एंड इन फैक्ट इन साइड ऑल्सो दिस शॉप इज कम्प्लीटली फुल विल स्पीक टू भैया हु इज हेयर भैया कितने साल पुरानी दुकान है मैं संगरूर से ही पंजाब से पंजाब से आया हुआ तो ये गब्बर सिंह कचौड़ी वाले के यहाँ का कैसा स्वाद है लस्सी बहुत अच्छा स्वाद है बहुत अच्छा स्वाद आते रहते हैं वृंदावन हाँ जी अभी तो पहली बार आए हैं अच्छा पहली बार आए कैसे इंतजाम है क्या माहौल बहुत अच्छा है हम इस वक्त मौजूद हैं मोहनलाल पेड़े वाले नामक एक दुकान पर जो कि बाके बिहारी मंदिर से कुछ ही दूरी पर है और काफ़ी मशहूर दुकान है जब कभी भी आप बाके बिहारी के दर्शन के लिए आए और प्रसाद अगर ले जाना है आपको भगवान में भोग चढ़ाना है जो कि चढ़ाना ही होता है तो यहाँ पर आप आ सकते हैं तरह तरह की यहाँ पर मिठाइयाँ उपलब्ध हैं और अगर वृंदावन आए और मिठाइयों की बात नहीं की तो जो सफ़र है जो जर्नी है वृंदावन की या जो दर्शन आप है वो अधूरा रह जाएगा अगर मिठाइयों की बात है क्योंकि जो बाकी बिहारी हैं वो भी मिठाइयों के बड़े शौकीन हैं लस्सी दूध दही क्या सबसे ज्यादा बाकी बिहारी को क्या पसंद है हमारे बिहारी को सबसे ज्यादा रबड़ी पसंद है रबड़ी सबसे ज्यादा पसंद अगौटा अगौटा तो वो है यहाँ पे ये ये रबड़ी है इसकी छोटी बहन होता है अगौटा अगौटा तो बाकी बिहारी को सबसे ज्यादा अगौटा पसंद है अच्छा और उसके बाद और क्या भगवान श्री कृष्ण जो है बचपन हाँ। से माखन दूध दही खा के ही बड़े हुए हैं हाँ। जो माखन जी वाला जो माखन रखा हुआ है ओ माखन बटर हाँ। ये भगवान श्री कृष्ण को बहुत फेमस है हाँ। क्या कहाँ से आए आप लोग हम लुधियाना से हाँ? लुधियाना से।, से क्या इंतजाम है दर्शन हुए अच्छे बहुत अच्छे ठाकुर जी ने तृप्त कर दिया तृप्त कर दिया ठाकुर जी ने आपके जय जय श्री राधे बहुत अच्छे दर्शन हुए बिहारी जी ने अपनी फुल कृपा की सारी थकावट खत्म हो थकावट खत्म हो गया उनके दिन बहुत जलपान हुआ कुछ बहुत सबको प्रसाद मिल गया दाल बहुत मिला हमें भोग भोग मिला 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 हमें अंदर से मिला। अंदर से मिला। क्या अच्छा भोग मिश्री अच्छा माखन मिश्री माखन मिश्री माखन मिश्री मिला जलेबिया मिली जलेबिया भी मिली पूरी मिली आलू की सब्जी क्या बात है कचौरी लड्डू मिला लड्डू मिला पूरा छप्पन भोग ठाकुर जी ने हमें दे दिया कर दी बोलो राधे मन तृप्त हो गया जो भावना के साथ आए थे लुधियाने से सफर के पूरी थकान मिट गई सफर की हाँ बिहारी जी ने इतने खुले दर्शन दिए और बरसाना में गए वहाँ भी राधा रानी सरकार ने खुले दर्शन दिए जय जय श्री राधे
लोग लॉट ऑफ एक्साइटमेंट हेयर ऑन ग्राउंड वी आर रिपोर्टिंग फ्रॉम ब्रिज की गलियां एंड इन फैक्ट वी आर रिपोर्टिंग आउटसाइड दिस मोहन लाल पेड़े वाले द फेमस स्वीट शॉप ऑफ 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 बाके बिहारी एंड इन फैक्ट यू नो दे इज लॉट ऑफ एक्साइटमेंट दे इज लॉट ऑफ कलर ऑन स्ट्रीट विल बी ब्रिंगिंग मोर रिपोर्ट फॉर एवर व्यूअर्स Rameshwaram blast case we are now learning uh, that there's been a major breakthrough after NIA detained the key suspects there's another update that the main accused has now been arrested from West Bengal this is the big breaking story that we are bringing to you with regards to the Rameshwaram blast case remember the NIA had identified Musavvir Hussain Shazib as the key accused who had carried out that blast at the cafe uh, the rameshwaram cafe in bengaluru on 1st of march those are the cc cctv images of uh, the main accused let's quickly go across to arunima who's currently live with us arunima uh, share with us uh, details of this arrest that's just been made how has the nia finally been able to trace him all the way to bengal So what the NIA has said is that they had concrete leads. They were questioning all the ISIS uh, Shimoga module members for some time now, and based on that, they got a, a lead that uh, perhaps there is a hideout or somebody who's harboring the accused in West Bengal. Based on which, a team landed up at their hideout in West Bengal early this morning, and they found both the main accused, uh, Muzaf, Muz, uh, Musavvir Hussain Shazib. who is accused of placing the ied at the rameshwaram cafe blast he is the man you see wearing the baseball cap in all the cctv footage that was captured by nia and his harborer abdul mateen taha the alleged mastermind as the nia is calling him hmm. he allegedly planned this entire conspiracy put together the explosives for the ied and trained shazib to carry out this uh, blast so the, both of them were together uh, and they were found at this hideout in west bengal early this morning by nia they will be taken uh, to the relevant court in bengaluru and i is likely to seek custody from there absolutely that's in fact uh, a huge shot in the arm for the nia on that note let's also go across to harish who's live with us uh, harish made a victory for the nia now that they've been able to trace the accused and the co-conspirator uh, this would have been a multi-pronged investigation i believe absolutely and i pointing out that uh, they have indeed received uh, help from multiple agencies not mm. just karnataka police but police uh, in other states as well as arunama pointed out uh, this has been a investigation that's uh, Uh, gone into several states it was in tamil nadu for a brief while in maharashtra because there was a suspicion that they had gone to pune now they've been picked up uh, from uh, west bengal in the meanwhile there were other states uh, in north india where they had bit of a suspicion that too has been looked into it also gives a indication on how uh, the planning has happened from the uh, end of these conspirators uh, they've gone to multiple cities they've ensured that uh, the police or nia in the later stage of this investigation do not get any sort of a lead on their whereabouts and also right now the other key aspect that uh, we'll have to talk here is how with the arrest of uh, abdul uh, tahin mata uh, uh, it it's a, in a way the complete isis shumuga module mm-hmm. has been dismantled uh, sharik is arrested masmunir is arrested uh, taha matin is somebody who is also seen as a handler or a conspirator in the mangaluru blast case with his arrest now uh, it's it's in a way end of the isis shumuga module but definitely two things uh, yet to be ascertained whether they were others and second there was another person who went by the name of uh, colonel what happens to him where is he is he absconding is he in another country that's something that the nia will talk about uh, but a major breakthrough for the nia as you rightly mentioned absolutely on that note uh, arunima uh, how the nia planned this out because remember there were all they had also declared rewards uh, of uh, cash prize worth 10 lakh rupees to get more information but as harish is also highlighting the fact that this could perhaps be the end of the isis shivmoga model uh, but do shed light on how much information was received by all those suspects who were detained muzammil sharif as we can see uh, was a resident of chikmangaluru extended logistics support to uh, the main accused persons that uh, such kind of information in fact is only highlighting uh, how much planning and how this has been an interstate uh, uh, plan being hatched by this entire module see invest Thank <laughs> you.
Hello, Namaskar. This is First Post and you're watching Vantage with me, Palki Sharma. We're coming to you from Bengaluru today, the tech and startup capital of India. It's a vibrant and diverse city. You can feel the sense of excitement and opportunity here. And both are scarce commodities nowadays. Because every, elsewhere, things are pretty tense, especially in West Asia. The entire region is on edge right now. It is bracing for a possible attack by Iran on is Israel. The assessment is that it could happen within 48 hours. We'll tell you what the fallout could be. Over in the Indo-Pacific, new alliances are being formed. Joe Biden hosted the leaders of Japan and the Philippines. He's promised to, to defend both countries from China. But can America's economy afford it? I ask because the talk of recession is back. Meanwhile, Switzerland is hosting a peace summit for Ukraine. The dates are finally out, but the question is, will Russia attend? All this and more lined up, but first the headlines. There will be assembly elections in Jammu and Kashmir soon, assures Prime Minister Narendra Modi. During an election rally in the region, the Prime Minister also promised to restore statehood. In 2019, Jammu and Kashmir's special status was revoked and its statehood was withdrawn. Citing thin Canadian presence, Ottawa retrenches India staffers from its diplomatic missions across India. Last year, New Delhi had expelled more than 40 Canadian officials to achieve parity in diplomatic presence. Since then, Canada had stopped in-person operations at its consulates in Mumbai, Bengaluru and Chandigarh. The U.S. topples China as Taiwan's largest export market. This is due to a surge in demand for microchips and AI technology. Self-ruled Taiwan is a microchip manufacturing powerhouse. For two decades, Taiwan's top export market has been China. which South Africa's electoral body takes Jacob Zuma's case to the country's highest court. The court will now decide if the former president can contest in the general election that's coming up in May. Last month, the poll body had excluded Zuma from the race, but on Tuesday, an electoral court had overruled it. And social media giant Meta is under fire after it lowers the minimum age for WhatsApp users from 16 to 13. In the UK and the European Union, the change which comes into, comes into effect now was first announced in February. Child safety groups accuse Meta of putting profits before protecting children. The clock is ticking. Iran could strike Israel in the next 48 hours. Since last night, the threat level has gone up. Reports say Tehran has zeroed in on its targets. It is preparing for a direct attack on Israel. Iran's supreme leader has been presented with strike options. If he chooses to attack Israel directly, parts of North and South Israel could be potential targets. It's a small country as it is. Now, hectic diplomacy is underway to avoid what is increasingly becoming inevitable a wider war in West Asia. America is trying to pull Iran back from the brink. The U.S. Secretary of State has been making calls, asking the likes of China, Turkey and Saudi Arabia to stop Iran. But will they be able to convince Tehran? And remember, this escalation started with Israel. They're the ones who carried out an airstrike in Syria. They bombed an Iranian consulate in Damascus. Top military officials, top Iranian military officials died in that strike. Iran says Israel's strike was a direct attack on them. So now they want to pay back in kind. How would they do it? Most likely using medium-range missiles. That's one of the probable scenarios. They're already issuing threats online. Videos have appeared showing simulated attacks on Israel. They feature high-value targets like Israel's Haifa airport and a nuclear facility in Dimona. Israel is said to have a nuclear reactor there in Dimona. So the plans are very much in place. Iranian officials are now waiting for a go-ahead from Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, the supreme leader of the country. Reports say he wants to think this 